Hi, I'm Matt Fitz with Fahrenheit Technologies. In this video, we'll be troubleshooting a combination of both the Auger Timeout Error Code and the No Proof of Fire Error Code. Auger system is mainly relative to both of these error codes. So to begin, we're going to go to the control panel and locate our prime button. We're going to be utilizing this at a couple different points throughout this testing process. Opening the hopper lid, we're going to locate our lid switch. If you push down, you should be able to check for any broken lid switch or push in to test the functionality. Next, we're going to go through pressing the prime button and the lid switch. You should see or hear any auger rotation. Keep in mind this is a pinch point, so keep your fingers clear. After closing the hopper lid, we're going to continue to the back of the machine. Going right to our auger system, we're going to disconnect the pink lead. Grab your multimeter. Now we're going to go to the fan limit switch. And we're going to check the top right hand corner, the blue wire. If you do not get any continuity through these two points, your lid switch is defective. And to continue testing, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to bypass this lid switch. In the back right hand corner, locate the pink and blue wires. Carefully disconnect them from the lid switch. Take these two terminals plug them in together. For hopper extensions, this is going to have to be done in order to operate on a consistent basis. For troubleshooting purposes without a hopper extension, only do this for testing purposes. Go ahead and disconnect your white lead. Now we're going to check for live voltage going to these two terminals. This is live voltage, so keep in mind it is a shock hazard. So with the digital control panel, I'm getting a constant 117 volts. This is based off a 120 volt input. Once pressing the prime button, you should see it jump a couple volts. So we do have active voltage going through when pressing the prime button. Next, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the wire harness from the motor bracket using a 3 8 wrench on the inside. I like to remove the screw and the nut just so you don't drop them on the top of the blower shelf and lose track of them. On the bottom left hand corner you'll notice a zip tie holding the wire harness in place. Carefully snip that so you don't catch any wires. Go ahead and pull that straight out. Take your entire harness from the top of the motor. Go ahead and tuck it underneath the motor. Next, we're going to locate the two hex nuts on the right hand side and the two hex nuts on the left hand side. Go ahead and take all four of those off. Once you get that last one out, go ahead and slide your auger out carefully so you don't rip that gasket. You should see a pretty good gasket going all the way around performing an actual seal. Next we're going to go ahead and diagnose our love joists just to make sure the set screws are located on the flats of the auger motor and secure. 
as well as the flat to the auger screw. If it is not on the flat, it does have the potential to continue to rotate around, not engaging in the flat, so it's just gonna sit there and free spin. Next, we're gonna go ahead and perform a bench test to our auger motor. Orientation of the motor does not matter. So take your pink, sorry, your white and your black wires from the motor itself and plug it in. If you don't see any of this rotating, check your flats on both of these two items or you can also check the armature right here and ensure it's freely spinning if not you can re remove this cover check the bearings with a q-tip make sure it's properly lubricated uh, WD-40 worked pretty good for that one Otherwise, you could be looking at a defective auger motor or a stripped gearbox. So to replace these items, you'd contact your local dealer or contact us through our website at FahrenheitTech.com through our contact link. Thank you for watching.